planet Earth. 4.6 billion years ago, planet Earth formed out of dust left over from the birth of the sun. 4.4 billion years ago, volcanic activity released water vapor into the atmosphere. It cooled, fell as rain, and formed the Earth's first oceans. 3.8 billion years ago, life. Exactly how is still a mystery. Microbacteria, archaea, sea sponges. Wait, what? 1.5 billion years ago, oxygen began to 530 million years ago, the first vertebrate. Oh, look, fish. 400 million years ago, land plants. 225 million years ago, dinosaurs evolved from reptiles. That's crazy. And 160 million years after that, dinosaurs, spoiler alert, they died. Then, 130,000 years ago, modern humans appeared. From this point onwards, we took charge and started inventing things. And what was driving our desire for these things? Advertising. 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 One way or another, ads have been around us for thousands of years. Ancient Egyptians used papyrus to make sales pamphlets. Political posters have been found in the ruins of Pompeii. And in 16th century Venice, modern advertising began to take shape in newspapers and magazines. But it wasn't until the Industrial Revolution that ads really took off. We found ourselves producing extreme quantities of stuff that we never knew we needed. This has fueled mass consumption, contributing to the climate crisis we find ourselves in right now. Okay, so just to recap this long-winded introduction, planet Earth, humans, advertising, consumerism, climate crisis. See the connection there? What you're about to see is not a work of fiction. Any similarities to actual persons living or dead at actual events is not purely coincidental. Thank you very much. When I think about the relationship between advertising and climate change, I feel uncomfortable. Like Ben, 71% of people working in advertising are worried about the negative impacts of the industry on the environment. When I think about advertising and climate change, I automatically think of a, a bit of a tension. Growing sense of disquiet and unease. At an existential crisis, almost on a weekly basis. It's a difficult one. Um, we exist as an industry to grow our clients' business and to drive consumption. And yet we're all increasingly aware that that is driving climate crisis that we're all facing into. I think when I first started out in advertising, I was given a, a view of what success would look like and most of those things were based around financial values or targets that had to be hit in terms of sales. And that's what people tell you is a good job. Sell stuff, sell more of it. It does look advertising, doesn't it? 60% of greenhouse gases are caused by household consumption. And that's what kind of got us into this mess, creating the desire for more and more. We consume at a rate where by 2050, we'd need three planets. But we don't have three planets. And in order to save the one and only, we need to halve emissions by 2030. To achieve this, we need to change everything, including the advertising industry. The industry is very keen to be a positive force, particularly on the social side. Advertising at its best does create culture, you know, it shifts attitudes and changes behaviour. But I think that it's only in the last sort of five years that I've seen that as a huge responsibility and something that we need to take control of. We all have treated this planet terribly, but we've only really recently woken up and realised that that's the case and we need to act urgently. As agencies, we are perfectly placed to, to meet the challenge. And we also have a superpower, which is creativity, storytelling. I think if we can accept that advertising you know, created this consumerist society that we live in, we should also accept that we can create a different society. I think we need to shift from an industry that creates growth at all costs towards an industry that really takes into account you know, profit, people and planet. So we need to be pushing for, for that change to happen. Yeah, we need to be kind of turkeys voting for Christmas. Rather than waiting for people 
uh, the government, for example, to tell us what to do here. We can choose to do nothing uh, and simply make choices based on how much profit we're going to make, or we make decisions that benefit more than just our shareholders, more than just the people that, that work here, in fact. So, on one hand, kind of like the dark side, we are part of the problem, a big part of the problem. But on the flip side, I think we're also part of the solution. There are three things that we can do. The first is getting our own house in order. You can think about the emissions associated with our operations and our offices, but I think we need to be thinking further than that. We need to be thinking about the work that we're putting out into the world. What is it that we are advertising on behalf of our clients? The fact that a single automotive campaign can far outweigh the collective total industry carbon footprint is something that should make us all stop and think. Uh, and number three is how we use our own brands. We've forgotten what the word agency means. Agencies no longer have agency because we were just responding to our clients' requests. I kind of think we haven't been particularly creative as an industry for a long time. The thing that we've been doing has basically been the same thing in slightly different ways. I think we're capable of a lot more creatively. It's not just about increasing shareholder value. It's about understanding that companies sit within communities. And making sure that they are keeping up with their audience and keeping up with culture. You know, they want the same future as you do, and that's what you need to lean into. So now we think about all of our decisions through the lens of the impact they're having on society, the impact they're having on the environment, the impact they're having on the communities and people around us. Everything that you work on as, a, as an agency for a client will have a set of objectives. If there is going to be a carbon impact from it, how are we reducing that carbon impact? And how is it going to be less than the campaign we did a year ago? You're thinking about sustainability it really needs to be part of everyone's job, not just the people who work as part of a green or sustainability team. The last thing the world needs is another sustainability consultancy. What it needs is people in places of influence like you to care about this and to try and drive change. I think if we start from the point of view of none of us know anything, let's try and learn and let's try and make some change. We need to make people feel safe. We need to create those spaces for different ideas to come to the table. People need space to come together, away from their busy jobs to reflect and explore the tensions. You know, I've felt this tension for, for a very long time. You know, I've got three children and there was a moment where I was asked to work on something that really didn't sit well with my own kind of, you know, moral views of the world. And so I quit what I was doing. And I think from there, it was then trying to work out how I can do something that, that, that might make a bit of a difference in the world. What makes Purpose Disrupted unique is the opportunity for people in the advertising industry to come and explore the tensions that they have and then take meaningful action. We are a community-based organisation. We build networks around kind of projects and within the industry. Um, and this year, the Good Life 20 to 30 project. As part of the project, we ran a kind of series of industry leader workshops. And it was interesting, there were some really compelling kind of things that came out of that. The need to shift from being a service industry to an industry in service of life. Historically, the advertising industry has had a massive influence on what people desire and dream about. In other words, what is a, a good life? At the moment, it defines the good life in society as consuming more. More of it. Buying different products. Big cars and more of it. Money, power and prestige. Buying different products. More of it. Big cars and money, power and prestige. High, high quality at a low, low price. What we can do as an industry, I think, is think about how to frame the lifestyle which we will all need to adopt to make it desirable. A future where less does not feel like loss. And I think all of it starts with listening. All of it starts with not thinking about people like consumers. I think we need to shift now so that we're talking about those people as citizens and they are involved in uh, in the idea of, of the good life. The moment within climate communications, a lot of it is talking to the same 13% of people who are already doing the things they need to do. And so one of the things that people in advertising can do is actually to reach outside the bubble and to talk to mainstream audiences about what really matters to them. Purpose Disruptors and the Insight Climate Collective spoke to people who represent 42% of the UK public that are really concerned about the climate crisis. They asked them, what does a good life in 2030 look like? Everyone agreed they wanted balance. Good health. Peace, love. A sense of belonging. And just appreciate what we've got around us. That's what makes you happy. 
My name is Jackie. Manjit Mahay. Matthew Doverstone. Charlie Rich. During the pandemic, I learnt it was important to be as true to myself as I can be. Just taking more time to make decisions made me realise that life's too short. So I gave up a job that I wasn't particularly happy in. And now I've got my own little baking business. Learned a lot about myself and also the family. How to communicate and respect each other. From lockdown spawned this kind of a need to interact more. I have this dream, I have this dream that I would have this amazing community facility that would provide sport, education. And in 2030, I'd like to see us doing more of that, spending time looking out for each other more. In 2030, I think I will be doing more to enjoy nature and the environment. Hopefully, I will have a house with a garden. I would definitely like to be able to be outside more. Whether it's gardening, whether it's a walk in the park, where we live, it's lovely and rural, there's lots of fields, countryside, and I love still seeing pretty environment around us. So I think the old good life and the, the good life that people have envisaged for 2030 are very different. We think that people want things, big cars and to travel business class. I think society tells us with all the advertising that we see that we need this gadget, we need that phone. I don't think actually we do. Surely advertising should be making you want the things that actually you do need. We need just to spend more quality time with each other. Rather than always kind of having to strive to get more and it's never enough, I can be satisfied with what I've completed, what I've yeah, achieved. It would be more about just more mindfulness, to be honest with you. And I don't think that the, the world that we've sold people reflects that. So I think it's important that in advertising we recognise that this kind of universal human truth that we all want the same thing, and that's not necessarily a lot of things. Try and do your advertising and try and bring in sort of more social and environmental issues. I think it just needs to promote family time, people time. So maybe Advertising can be a source for great good going forward. And so it was time to get creative. When you think about 2030, the only visions that are out there are ones that are either really dystopian, that are kind of really difficult and say so people look away, or they're really utopian and actually people don't believe them. It really leads to a lot of apathy, it really leads to a lot of inaction. So we thought, what if we treated it as a client to try and build warmth, make that year famous, and start to help people connect to it? So the final part of the project is, is about creation. It's the soul of the industry. We've enlisted help from agencies within the industry and McCann, Iris and Gravity Road are all creating kind of ads of 2030. There's a quote that we say quite a lot in our industry. We're just doing advertising, we're not saving the world. And then all of a sudden this brief lands and that's kind of, kind of is what you're doing. You don't get a brief like that every day. This has been a very unusual creative process. We gather a whole load of our creative team and get them to run of a brief really hard. Absolutely everybody in our department wanted to have a crack at it. We've had 50 creatives working on it across three agencies, suddenly working in collaboration with each other. Eight weeks from start to finish, super quick. It's not about minimum. Got some humour, got things that feel maybe a little bit more emotionally hard-hitting, a really interesting representation of where the ad industry can meet this challenge. So what is the future of advertising? I've no idea what the advertising industry is going to look like. What we do believe to be true is that it's going to be completely different. Many people in the industry and a lot of leaders in the industry really, really want to do more. We can drive ill in society and we can drive great good. And I think as a person working in the industry, you have to ask which side of that you want to be on. Most compelling thing that people can start doing is just opening their hearts, have a chat with your colleagues, have a chat with your, your leadership. The sustainability shift is the biggest cultural shift of our generation. And it's our responsibility as agencies to be guiding our clients through that shift. We need to move away from doing that just for individual brands and more for society as a whole. Be bolder, be braver, be more audacious. Otherwise we're going to be redundant in 10 years time. And the key thing is just to start doing something. 
please do something. <laughs>